Welcome to Mikon's Hardware. On my channel you can find lots of different videos about Intel LGA 2011 version 3 platform with the Xeon and Core i7 CPUs. That was a very successful platform from Intel, but back then AMD was not competitive. After LGA 2011 version 3, Intel releases LGA 2066, but unfortunately for them AMD became competitive. Even though LGA 2066 somehow successfully competed with the Ryzen 3000 CPUs, Ryzen 5000 CPUs made it completely obsolete. And I believe that Intel made three big strategic mistakes with this platform. So first of all, for some stupid reason, Intel decided to split server parts from the desktop parts. So now, Xeon W CPUs are no longer compatible with the Consumer X299 motherboards, and the Core i5, i7 and i9 CPUs are no longer compatible with the server uh, C422 motherboards. According to me, it was a very greedy and very stupid decision, but Intel decided to go this route. The next big problem is the switch of the CPU topology. Intel decided to move from the famous and very efficient Ring bus to the Mesh bus. And yes, I understand that it was not possible to increase the core count using the Ring bus, but no one prevented Intel from using Ring bus with a low core count CPUs and Mesh bus with high core count CPUs. And lastly, the big strategic problem with the X299 or LJ2066 CPUs is the amount of cache. So, for example, if we compare 10 core Xeon from V3 series to W series, and in this case I have E5 2066 V3 compared to W2150B, both of the CPUs has 10 cores, but E5 2666 V3 has 25 megabytes of cache, while W2150B comes with just 13.75 megabytes of cache. And that means that the old V3 Xeon has almost twice as much cache for the same number of CPU cores. Another big LJ2066 problem was, and still is, the price. The X299 motherboards are still very overpriced and the server counterparts with the C422 chipset are overpriced as well. Nevertheless, these days uh, I see more and more used uh, LJ2066 workstations on eBay and local auctions for somehow reasonable price. These workstations come from Dell, HP or Lenovo. And in my case I have Lenovo P520. For my workstation I paid about 400 euros. It came to me with a Xeon W2133 with a 32 gigs of RAM, 2 sticks, 16 gigabytes each, 512GB Samsung SSD and a pathetic NVIDIA GT710. For the power supply I have got the 690W version, but some of the workstations have power supplies with up to 1000 watts. Enough talks, let's go into the test results. And the first disappointment is the Lenovo BIOS. The BIOS is fully locked. We have absolutely no tuning possibilities, even XMP profile doesn't work. Not to mention some sort of memory overclocking or RAM timing tunings. And that means that uh, without XMP profile, my DDR4 3200CL14 memory works at DDR4 2133, which is pathetic. To get DDR4 2066 in this workstation, you need memory modules that are natively supporting this speed without any sort of overclocking in form of XMP profile. Unfortunately, I do not have four identical modules for this testing. That's why I'm going to make a limited preview using the two memory sticks I have received together with this workstation. It's also worth mentioning that Lenovo P520 does not support resizable bar and I did not find any ways to enable it, but if you have some clues, please leave me a comment. So, for this comparison I'm going to test the Xeon W2133 that came with the workstation and additionally I'm going to test Xeon W2150B that's lying on my shelf and collecting dust for quite a while now. I am going to compare these results to Xeon E5 2697V3 that was tested on a Chinese Quanon J motherboard with the Turbo Boost unlocked and resizable bar enabled. I have also tuned memory, so we have DDR4 2133CL12 and disabled hybrid threading. Now let's take a quick look at the specification of the CPUs. Xeon W2133 has 6 cores, 12 threads, up to 3.9 GHz and only 8.25 MB cache. 
Xeon W2150B has 10 cores, 20 threads, up to 4.5 GHz, but still only 13.75 MB cache. And the Xeon EFI2697 V3 has 14 cores, 24 threads, up to 3.6 GHz, and massive 35 MB cache. Another reminder, EFI2697 V3 was tested with hyperthreading disabled. Testing memory performance with ADA64, we can immediately see the negative impact of the mesh topology and untuned memory with the Xeon W CPUs. So with the W2133, the memory latency is 85 nanoseconds. This is just disgusting. With the Xeon W25B, the result is not much better, 80 nanoseconds. And EFI 2697V3 with the DDR4-2133 shows 70 nanoseconds latency. In Cinebench R23, we have somehow expected results because R23 is not very memory sensitive and doesn't really rely on memory latency. So a Xeon W2133 with one CPU core scores about 1012 points. When all CPU cores are utilized, the score is 7668 points. W2150B with one CPU core scores 1165 points and with all CPU cores 11540 points. Then we have EFI2697V3. With just one CPU core, it gets 829 points. And with all 14 cores but without hyper-threading, we get 10048 points. So, as expected, a much older EFI 2697V3 gets beaten when it comes to the single core performance. But unfortunately, these numbers do not represent gaming performance. Here I have tested 5 games because for the proper comparison I need quad channel memory configuration and the results with the Xeon W CPUs were so bad that I even downloaded in Spectre a program to disable Spectre and Meltdown patches. Still, even with these patches disabled, the Xeon W CPUs were not able to catch up with the good old EFI 2697V3. The results are pretty bad and I feel embarrassed showing them to you, but it is what it is and testing F1 2021 with the Xeon W2133 we get only 129 FPS. With the Xeon W2150B we get 120-148 FPS. And with the good old EFI 2697V3, my RX7800 XT is able to render 138-173 FPS. In Horizon Zero Dawn, the gap between the CPUs is not that dramatic. Xeon W2133 renders 90-133 FPS, W2150B delivers 102-147 FPS, and EFI 2697V3 gives us 102-150 FPS. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, pretty similar picture. W2133 gives us only 73-125 FPS, W2150B delivers 91-151 FPS, and uh, the old EFI2697V3 renders 98-162 FPS. Far Cry 6, yet another win for EFI2697V3. It scores 72-96 FPS. W2150B takes the second spot, 66-85 FPS, and the last place is taken by the 6-core W2133. 6280 FPS. The most embarrassing result for Xeon W CPUs I have got in Rainbow Six Extraction. Here, W2133 is only able to deliver 8809 FPS. W2150B improves their result slightly to 9825 FPS, while EFI2697V3 is significantly better. It delivers 251. 310 FPS. As you can see, the difference is massive. It seems like this game really depends on the memory performance and the memory latency. Just look at the GPU utilization numbers. With the Xeon W2150B, my RX7900 XT is basically chilling at 50-60% load, while with the Xeon EFI2697V3, the GPU load goes as high as 90%. So basically, this Xeon W is not able to supply enough work for such a powerful graphics card like RX 7900 XT. 
I guess now it's time for a set conclusion. Even though Xeon W CPUs come with a new platform, more CPU cores, higher clock frequency, theoretically better single core performance, these CPUs are still not able to catch up in games with the old Xeon E5 V3 CPUs. And that's all because the memory performance is horrible and the cache capacity is basically halved. So, what can be done to improve performance of these Xeon W CPUs? Unfortunately, it's not much. At least not with this Lenovo P520 machine that has locked bias. As far as I know, this bias also has a cryptographic key, so it is not possible to do any sorts of modifications which are not designed by the Lenovo manufacturer. Of course, if I would have a branded expensive ASUS or some other motherboard that has all sorts of memory tweakings and maybe some sort of overclocking, the gaming performance would be slightly better. But all in all, I cannot recommend LGA2066 for gaming computers. If you're on a tight budget and you need a gaming computer, then the good old X99 LGA2011 version 3 is the way to go. But if you can afford spending a little bit more money, then LJ1700 or AMD AM4 are even better options. Still, Lenovo P520 is a well-built machine, and if you can get one for cheap, I can recommend it for work. For gaming, it's a big no. And with this, I have to say, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope it was interesting and educational. Bye for now.